did you come to Molly's game? I mean, how did it, did it come to you as an offer? I would imagine that they just wanted you because who no. else is going to do that? Part? <laughs> no, it definitely didn't come to me as an offer. I um, was told about the film and asked if I wanted to have a meeting with Aaron Sorkin, um, which I definitely did because I'm a huge fan of his writing and um, his presence in our industry. I, I love that he's a political filmmaker. It's really interesting to me. So yeah. um, I had a meeting with him and I knew he was meeting a lot of other actresses. And so I did a lot of research before the meeting. I Googled Molly Bloom because she's a real character and started to, I looked at how you know she presented herself in the world, how she dressed, her personality. And I saw that she was actually very confident. And so I went into the meeting and kind of like dressed like Molly Bloom and then a few minutes into the meeting, I just turned to Aaron and I said, why are we meeting? Why, why don't I have this part? <laughs> like, why are And he we... went, okay, the part is yours. He just kind of went, uh, 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 uh. And then he said, actually, Molly Bloom told me to cast you. <laughs> I thought, oh, that's good. Um, but, and then he's, you know, he and I were emailing back and forth uh, in a very charming Aaron Sorkin way. He said, okay, what draft did you read? And I said, oh, I read the draft a few days ago. And he goes, there's a new one. Let me send it to you. And he sent it to me. He's like, it's so different. And it was like two pages difference out of 200 pages. <laughs> and I wrote back and I like said. Like a true writer. Like a true, and an Aaron Sorkin writer where, you know, uh, he, he, he likes his words. And I wrote back and I was like, this is that's still, it's still great. It's not that different. Um, I will say that it's, it's pretty much the same, but it's still great. <laughs> and he wrote back to me. He was like, ugh, actors. <laughs> And you went, oh, I want to work with this guy. Yeah, I, I did. Because also, too, he's someone, um, I like that he challenges me and and we really up each other's game in, in a way, you know, like that partnership between actor and director where they, it's really a collaboration. It felt, you know, it felt intimate, mm. your relationship with him, mm. you know, because... You are a lone creature in the movie. Mm -hmm. You are alone. You are alone on the landscape. Yeah. Um, and I can only imagine, and because your work is so intimate, I went, you must have had an intimate, you know, kind of great working relationship had, with him. Yeah, I had an amazing working relationship with Aaron. Um, but also challenging. I will say it was very challenging. So you, could you also challenge him? Could you Absolutely. disagree? But I think that's probably mm -mm. why he cast me. I mean, I hope that's why he cast me. Because I, I'm always respectful. But if there's uh, something that I feel strongly about, then I will come forward with it. Like in the beginning of the film, before we even started shooting, right before I got on set, he sent me an email saying that he was thinking about it and he decided he wanted Molly to look like me. So to come in and like, yeah, like me. And I was like, wait a minute, this is so different from what I thought I was gonna play because Molly Bloom is so different than oh, So me, cool. Right? So cool. So cool that look and that yeah. thing she goes through. And and I really, like there was a, a lot of back and forth of, and he, you know, he's the most, loving and generous and incredible thinker. So I really started to doubt myself. But I said, no, Erin, it's very important to me to show this change that she goes through. A lot of this film to me, it felt like a Kardashian story. And, it's, you know, women in our society, what women um, do to finally be visible, to be heard. Um, and so, and thank goodness he, he, followed my instinct with that, that um, to really go as, as deeply into the look of Molly Bloom as I could. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of like back and forth where he would tell me something and I go, oh, I'm not sure. And then I think about it and go, you know what, you're right. And that's what I like. I love that co kind of collaboration where it's, it's not, we're not always on the same page because I want someone that I can learn from. And if, if I'm with someone that is just kind of agreeing with me or has every idea that I have, then I'm really not growing at all. No, no, I, 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 I agree sometimes. Uh, uh, I, don't wanna, I don't want somebody to just go, well, if, how does that feel for you? It's yeah. Like, well, but how does it feel for you? Yeah. <laughs> I want to, I wanna, how does it feel for you? I mean, not just me, because like my perspective is not, 
you know, everything. I mean, mm-hmm. it, I want it to be good for the story, for the, you know. Yeah. But it, it's fascinating. He just went, oh, I want what you, what you are. Mm. He kind of moved into closer to you, and you were thinking about the, the transportation. Yeah. That those clothes we're movie. gonna offer you, yeah. you know, in terms of, I mean, in your evolution through the movie, mm-hmm. through your your whole look, your your hair, your makeup, and what you were wearing, your jewelry, which was like outrageous yeah. as you went on. Um, it was, just, you know, it was, it was magnificent. I mean, it was yeah. so much fun. You understand what I'm saying? I understand each of the words that you're saying, but I don't understand look. what you're, 24 hours a day, Every day. You're going to stop paying me to do that job because I'm making too much money doing my second job. And if I say no, I'll lose both jobs because it doesn't seem fair. Business is bad right now. It was fun. And at the same time, it was you felt the power of presenting yourself like that into the world. When I'd walk onto set dressed like that, I could feel, oh, wow, I'm getting a lot of attention right now because of how I'm presenting myself. But then so you feel this this energy shift and power. And then you also feel smaller. Like I can't, I couldn't sit like this on a chair. I couldn't lean over tables. Wow. I couldn't walk fast. So as personally, you feel like you're being diminished because your <laughs> mobility is being moved or right. stopped. Right. But you also feel that people are acknowledging you in a way that they weren't before. So it's a very interesting dy- dynamic when thinking about like gender politics and patriarchy. And also in order for a woman to find success, she has to be sexual, uh, sexually desirable to men in, yeah, in industries run by men. I mean, I was, you know, when, well, I don't want to blow it. I don't want <laughs> to blow it, but I, I did feel like that what you brought to that equation, I mean, for me, I didn't feel like that the reason why you did all of this was so that you could have power over men. I mean, yeah. I, I, I felt that that, uh, that was, of course, in the equation, but I felt it was much more complicated than that yeah. because the way that you wielded your power was distinctly female, and I don't even mean the carapace. Mm-hmm. I don't even mean that. I meant like the inside of you broached the whole thing from such a female place of yeah. power that that's what I kept feeling about you throughout because otherwise it would have been you the way that you would have wielded the power would have been different if that, that was your primary card that you were playing to, yeah you know not the not the pun but <laughs> the pun uh, um, yeah, but, but you know what I mean yeah I I think the father's wrong when he says that that she wants like, I, I power too. a powerful man it's not what it's about she just wants power she just wants it's, it's, acknowledgement she just wants success she wants to be acknowledged for the person she is, for the entrepreneurial she is, she's, that she's building up right. this business. And the problem is men are in charge of all of that. If you look at her family, if you look at her industry, and you look at the government, in each situation, in each one that we see in the film, she is beholden to the rules of men. The father's the moral authority in our household. The, in the industry... The, the, the mother is victimized. Completely. And he's, and he's a hypocrite, we find Spoiler, we find out at the end. <laughs> but, you know, and all these, and the rules change. I mean, Aaron Sorkin actually wrote a line that says the rules would change based on the whims of men. And so it's not about her just wanting power over men. No, it's no. Her wanting power in society, her wanting a voice. Wanting your own so, personal power. Exactly. Um, and I also, and I was just wondering, I, I, I would imagine that you probably don't. I, I mean, I, I but when you take a part, do you ever then begin to explore political statements that you want to make in a part? Absolutely. And did that happen? In, I would imagine that it would have happened in this. It happened in this, and I knew it would because Aaron Sorkin, we were talking about him being a political filmmaker. Right. And he's someone that, you know, in his writing, there's this sense that justice will prevail against the odds. There's this (laughs) idealism, you know, that he's always had. And he wrote, I really feel strongly that he, it couldn't couldn't have happened at a more relevant time. Actually, it could have. It could have happened 10 years ago. It could have happened 20 years ago. This is better. 
I mean, it's, a, this it's is much incredible. Better. But we're living in a society where men are in charge, you know? And he wrote this movie about that. And so, yes, I was playing Molly Bloom, the person and the individual on the micro level. But then I also have to look at the macro. What is the big picture here? And how can Molly Bloom's story relate to women all over the world? Not even just in the United States, but women in other countries, women in other societies where they are being denied a voice or... Um, they're having to navigate what it is to be a uh, female in a situation where, like in our film, the men tell her how she needs to present herself. Her boss tells her, ugly dress, ugly shoes, and she goes and buys an outfit that makes her look nothing like herself, and she becomes more sexually desirable, hoping that they will accept her. Um, in the government, her, her a lawyer tells her she looks like the Cinemax version of herself. Right, right. So, I mean, the fact that this came from Aaron's, it's just, it's blown my mind that he was able to see so much about um, what women navigate. And his daughter is really strong with him, which is how this came to be. I was named after my great grandmother. I don't care. Molly. We Dublin will stay Bloom here all night is until my you name. understand. Until you understand nobody gives a shit about your good name. I do. Why? Because. Why? Because Tell me why. Because it's all I have left. You know, I think that, that the, the, the power that women can inhabit in, in a situation like that, it was not, it, it, the, the, it, was un, it was an unexpected kind of expression of the power. Mm -hmm. and, and also an unexpected kind of reception of the power from the men in the story. Yes. Um, you know, spoiler alert, whatever. But there was no assault or harassment. Not th that's not what the movie was being made up. Mm. Uh, you know, you were not threatened on a constant basis in, in that way. That would have, I think, this was far more interesting, far mm. more sophisticated, mm -hmm, far mm -hmm. more kind of subtle. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it was a great, it was a great joy for me. And, and I also loved all the women. <laughs> I'm trying. So, I loved all the women, though. I loved how it was I know. just like I know. there was a there was a when the once you, once you you got then all these women came to the fore and you guys were all like collaborating. Mm -hmm. it, was like, it was in a way that you that you don't see men do, and you guys did it with such effortlessness and such trust and grace. I mean, I love that that cabal of. of <laughs> of women that yeah. suddenly like came, mm -hmm. so it was good. Yeah, we, we, we had a lot of fun on set and actually I was like, oh, thank God, there's women on set. <laughs> yeah, that must have been yeah. a, a real change. Yeah, but I loved working with Aaron. I mean, did you have the same kind of experience um, on The Big Sick where, I mean, did you do a lot of research before you came on set or um, was it mostly kind of like, quick, we gotta do this now? Well, I mean, I was, I was thinking, you know, in, in in your movie is is a is like I said you know it's it's almost a lone a creature alone on a landscape and and mine uh, big sick is like peopled um, mm. I am part of a family you know like really on the inside track mm. um, of the family and I I think one of the things that I was attracted to the part most by was this one statement that my character made in the beginning of the movie, which was, she tells us everything, meaning my daughter tells me everything. And I thought, okay, I wanna run with that. Yeah. Of uh, portraying two women on screen who like each other, mm -hmm. who love each other, not just a stereotypical kind of <laughs> claustrophobic mother. Yes. Or, I mean, and you can play claustrophobic mothers, you know, beautifully and three-dimensionally. But in this case, I wanted to play somebody who had <clears throat> a really um, evolved relationship mm -hmm. with my grown daughter. You know, we, we, we successfully navigated our way through to a beautiful adult relationship with each other. And I thought, I, I never see women do that on screen, and I want that. Yeah. So I wanted to like, you know, nurture that and like unfold. Yeah, I wanted to unpack that piece of luggage, you know, on screen so that the audience could experience the strength of how women can know and love each other. 
I'm not sure why you're here. You, you don't have to worry about being committed to anything, Kamel. You didn't want to when she was awake. There's no need to do it when she's unconscious. What you're talking about is, is what I see all around me. Right. And so how wonderful that you got to do that in a film. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, I, and, and I got nothing but unmitigated, you know, unhesitating mm. support from Mike Showalter, who directed it, mm. and, and Judd Apatow, and Barry Mendel, the producer. I mean, it was like a real, like, company of experience. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Apatow kind of headed the pack of, like, how collaborative the thing was really going to be. Um, and he meant it. You know, he told me that, and then he, he truly, truly meant it. Mm. Um, so it, it had, a, a, there was a pleasure to, to you know, to, do, to the entire project from beginning to end. I think it shows on screen. I mean, it definitely it's does. kind of an effortless um, ensemble mm -hmm. because of uh, Judd and, and Show Walter. It feels like you guys have known each other forever. When I watched that movie, <laughs> I mean, of course I'm familiar with all of your other work and the work of the other brilliant actors, but... I really fell into the story of that film and, and to, to believe that you were family. And I don't know, have you, had you known the actors a long time before you started shooting? No, no we, we met each other, but <clears throat> one of the, and I'm sure you've experienced this before as well, where you, you kind of govern your um, process via, like if you're working with a director who doesn't like to rehearse, then you don't want to rehearse either because it's going to be a waste of time. Right. It's going to be uncomfortable. And they're going to be rolling their eyes the whole time, like looking at their watch. Right. How can I get out? And like texting. Yeah. You know. <laughs> um, but but this was uh, a cast and a director that who we, he really wanted to rehearse. Mm. So we spent a lot of time before we shot uh, hanging out and talking about the scenes and reading them and then, you know, talking about different ideas about how the scenes could be mm. fleshed out or, you know. Um, so we had that, that Mike instigated. So it was, I, you know, I thought it was, it was really bonding, you know, a, yeah. a, a, a cool, comforting experience. Did you do a table read? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. We did a table read that they recorded. There were cameras. Oh, wow. That's really that was wild. intimidating. That was, I was like <laughs> extremely intimidated. Out. I think it screwed up with your daughter. Yeah, it did. Let me give you some advice, Kamal. Love isn't easy. That's why they call it love. Are there monumental differences between working with a, a, a female yeah. director and working with a male? I didn't experience anything different in terms of working with a woman to working with a man. You know, for me, filmmaking isn't gender specific, which is why we need more women in filmmaking, because women can do it too, <laughs> right? Right. Um, and Kath, I've worked with Catherine Bigelow on you know, with action-y stuff, and I've worked with John Madden, you know, on kind of like romance-y stuff. So men can direct romances, women can direct action. It's not gender specific, but the one thing I will say is, is when there's more balance on set, um, in terms of more women on the crew, more yeah. women in positions of power, it's just a healthier set to be on. That's what I experience because, and also everyone's happier. The women are happy, the men are much happier. It's just a it's a great place to be. Um, so that what is what I would say, for me, the difference has, is with, when working with a female filmmaker is that perhaps they make more room for women um, because they know it's been difficult for them to get to where they are. And they're not intimidated by women. I find women aren't intimidated working with women. With other women. Yeah, so whenever I'm on a set with a female filmmaker, I've noticed the crew has more women in it. And have you, have you ever worked with a female DP? Yes, on Molly's Game. This is what's so incredible. Okay, so who's the, who? Charlotta. I'm who, so sorry to, to no, not no, know that. No, no, it's okay. Charlotta, she's the most incredible. I didn't notice. She would also do, um, she would um, operate the camera most of the time. Um, oh, that's so cool. It's so cool. Well, I love that. You know what, the, uh, and that's interesting. It was told from kind of a female point of view. I, I mean, I was gonna say that, that the different, you know, that, that the women that I've, I've worked, I've worked with a ton of women directors. 
I mean, I would totally agree with you that in a way there's like no difference. Yeah. Um, in, but there is some difference in the, the there's a strange feminine point of view, mm, mm. like the, the movie, not necessarily like the back and forth, because mm. I've had incredibly intimate relationships with male directors, very intimate, mm -hmm. where I felt like they were, they could just like reach in and they take saw. the, yeah, they <laughs> saw the, the private, mm. you know, but it's almost like where they put the camera or there's something inherently female, I don't know, in, that, in how Jane would like photograph, you know. That so makes for sense. you to have a female DP. Yeah, she didn't Molly's fetishize game me. Had something, yes, that, which is Molly's like, game had yeah. something that was female, yeah. not fetishizing of you. Yeah, not, which I really appreciated being on set. There was no like shots, the camera going up my legs or. Right, there was no. Yeah, exactly. You know that, that Piano is one of my favorite movies of all time, and I'm a huge, I'm obsessed with Jane Campion. So what was that Yeah, who's experience? like not? I mean, she is just, I, every time I see her, I, I get kind of tongue-tied because I'm so, I'm just so in awe of, of who she is. She's yeah. so grounded and earthy. and yeah, it's so fun. Yeah. How, what was that like being on that set? Well, I mean, it, it's interesting because I worked with her on, on the piano and then I worked with her years later on um, Top of the Lake mm -hmm. where I had this tiny part. But it was interesting because when you said that about Sorkin going, hey, why can't Molly look like you? <laughs> I like, I love what you've got on right now. And be like, no. Exactly. No, please. Because <laughs> Jane was like, I, I, I wore this long gray wig. I had like hair down to here and Top of the Lake and it was solid gray and and at one point the wig might not work out. And I was like, and Jane said, well, you can just do it with your own hair. And I was like, mm. you know, <laughs> this <is> my nightmare. <laughs> yeah, this, this cannot happen. Yeah. This, you know. Yeah. But. Um, they get seduced by the relationship they have with us. They go, okay, this is oh, who actually, I'm seeing. I want, I'm, you know, yeah, I know what I'm gonna get. I want this to show up on set. <laughs> right, no. I go, well, that's not who I'm playing. <laughs> yeah, 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 and then, then I start getting more afraid. Maybe my, maybe my idea sucks. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah I, you were I'm like, oh, way. sh, really? Yeah, of course, I've been familiar with your work forever. Obsessed, um, Raising Arizona, oh my gosh. <laughs> So good. Well, Holding that baby. I love him so much. You, you, you gotta work with the Cohen's. I do yeah. honestly that is have a great time. I, every time I'm somewhere where I'm really happy, <laughs> I pretend I'm holding a baby. I go, I love him so much. And do that from raising Arizona. It's one of my favorite things in the world. But um, you know, what has your experience in the industry been like? Have you noticed changes from the beginning of your career? Um well, you know, I mean, that's such an, I mean, but, but actually, th there's, a, you know, there's a multitude of ways that it's changed. But one of the ways that it's changed that has been slightly phenomenal mm -hmm. and that it happened, it happened almost, it's not without my noticing, but there was, there were more people in the room when I first started acting. There were more people in the room. For example, the director was always next to the camera. Ah, uh, yeah. And action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then so the director was right there. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And then, you know, like, mm -hmm. God, you know. And then you'd be like, and, and you'd be like, well, you know, good. So you feel that connection. Yeah. I mean, it was, so if I loved the director, that was, like, incredible. Mm. It was this first witness I mean, a person that I could reach out and touch. I mean, that, you know, you were saying that you and Sorkin had an intimate, mm -hmm. like, collaborative thing that was very apparent to me on screen. But just imagine him in the room n virtually. Like I said, he's the first person, other than the camera opera operator, experiencing your performance. Mm. Um, there's something about that that I... I feel a real loss. I mean, mm. it, it, I, I, I feel, you know, kind of heartbroken about that, that that's no longer uh, in existence. And if I loved a focus puller, there's no more focus pullers in the room. 
you know, the yes. focus pullers are doing it electronically. So I did miss that person, you know, who was taking out the, the, the tape, tape and, you know, and, and then pulling. I mean, sometimes I, mm. I would develop a real love, you know, yeah. for those crew members. Yeah. Um, and I have to say, I, I, I kind of mourn the loss of, of those two. I've, I've looked at them as like, well, collaborators, but also witnesses. I, I don't know. I felt less lonely. Mm-hmm.